So today, let's talk about animation. There was a lot of animation facilities added in Android 3.0, the Honeycomb release. There was a whole animation package, and that package in those classes have been enhanced over time in subsequent releases. So we're going to talk about some of the stuff that was added in 3.0, as well as some stuff that was added in Android 4.1, Jelly Bean. In particular, we're going to talk about the Layout Transition class. It's a little-known class. It's actually used a lot internally in some of the applications that we ship on Android. And it's something that we created to make animation much easier for you. I like to think about animation all the time, but I realize that maybe some other developers don't. So if we can make it easier and easier for you to get animated facilities within your application without spending a great deal of time and thought on it, then that's a good thing, right? So let's talk about layout transition. First of all, we'll start with the base application that doesn't have animations in it. And let's look at the code here. So we have a simple class that I've created. It's a custom view that I call colored view. And it has two states. It has an expanded and a compressed state. And when it's first added into its container, it's in a compressed state, and it's going to be uh, 50 pixels high. And when it's expanded, it's going to be 200 pixels high. And we can simply change those layout params so that when we click on this thing, it can expand or it can contract. And we can see we do something really interesting here. We basically randomize a color uh, to make it um, a colored view so that you can actually tell what the bounds of the view are. Uh, and then we allow you to click on the view and expand or contract. And we can take a look at the demo over on the screen to the right and see how this works. So we have two buttons up at the top, which add new views of different randomized colors or remove views uh, in the container. And if we click on one of these views, it will expand and contract as we toggle the clicks back and forth. And we can see the uh, other activity logic up here that does that. We have a, an add button and a remove button. We have the container. And we start out with two views that we add to the container. And then when you click on the add button, we add a view. And when you click on the remove button, well, we remove a view. OK, not terribly interesting. Um, I don't think I'd be doing this video if this was all it was. But now let's actually add some animation. You can notice that when we add an item, it just blinks into place. When we remove it, it blinks out of place. And when we click, uh, it just automatically expands or contracts. Um, that's not what I would call a nice uh, transition. It's certainly not a nice animation. So what can we do about that? Well, first thing we can do is add uh, a facility that was added in Android 3.0, as I said before, called Layout Transition. And there are a couple of different ways to do this, um, both of which are simple. But the easiest way is just to tell the container where you want animations to run automatically to animate the layout changes. So. Let's add an attribute here that is Android Animate Layout Changes, and we'll set it to true. We'll go ahead and save this. We'll run the application again. And watch over on the demo screen as it comes up. So it starts out the same. But now when we add an item, you'll see we actually get animated behavior just from that one line of code in the XML file. Things slide out of place uh, to make room, and then uh, fade in or fade out. So you can see as we add items, everything around it moves out of the way, and then we fade the new item in. As we remove an item, we fade out the item, and then everything moves around it to compress the space uh, that was freed up by the item going away. But when we click on the items to expand and contract, obviously those are uh, not animating. Those are just uh, popping into their before and after state. This was the behavior as it was in Honeycomb. You could easily add this one line of code in XML. You could add something very similar to set a layout transition object on a container uh, if you wanted to do it in code instead of the XML file. Um, so now we go to Android uh, 4.1, the Jelly Bean release, and we've got a new facility in there that allows you to actually animate uh, more. So let's see how that works. So if we come down to the end of our onCreate method, and we actually get a reference to the layout transition object that we created. So we can say layout transition equals container get layout transition. Okay, we know there's one on there because we set it in the resource file. But uh, and similarly, we could have set this in in code instead, uh, instead of the resource file. Uh, anyway, we know that there's a transition there, and then we can say transition. Dot. Enable transition type. Layout transition. Dot. Change ing. 
So there's a new type of transition that we're going to take advantage of in this release. Now, if we run this file again, demo pops up on the handy demo screen. And now let's see what it's like. So as before, when we add items, we get a nice animated behavior. When we remove them, we get a nice animated behavior. And when we click on them, we also get an animated behavior. So what we've told the layout transition object is to animate not only the default animations uh, that it knows about when items go away or come into being, but also when anything in the container changes the layout. So anything that happens that causes a layout on the container will make it look at all of its items and say, OK, where are you now and how big are you? And where are you and how big are you after the layout runs? And then it sets up animations internally to animate those changes, basically animating the bounds of the objects. So kind of nifty. And the best part is this was, what, three lines of code? It's one line of code just to enable the layout transition on a container. And then it's another couple of lines of code, or even effectively one line of code, to say, oh, I also want this changing behavior. Now, we changed the, uh, we, we added this facility in 4.1 to allow this behavior, but we did not change the default behavior because it could have been unexpected if people were using layout transition already. So instead, uh, we added it as a facility that you could add after the fact, saying, OK, enable a layout transition, and also enable the changing capability on that. And one of the things to realize about layout transition is that these could also be custom uh, animations. You can check this out in API demos if you'd like. There's some uh, demos showing custom animations as well as the default animations. But the default ones basically give you kind of what would be expected, which is when an item comes into being, we move everything out of the way, then we fade it in. And when it goes away, we fade the thing out, and then we move everything around it. And if you want something different, then you can certainly create that. So go ahead and check out Layout Transition and the 4.1 Jelly Bean release. And please play with it and add cool animated effects to your application. Thanks.